Howdy folks, apologies for being late. Uh, I was just busy and the day was shorter than expected. Caught me out a little. How is everyone else doing? I'll just let everyone know I'm starting up. Uh, there's quite a few drop frames, why would that be? I do not like it when it drops flames. I wonder if I should restart the stream. Hold on. Why would it be doing that? No. Wow, that seems quite heavy losses of frames. Hi, I post. Um, is the uh, is the stream a bit jerky? Seem to have a large frame drop, which is a bit weird. Trying to work out why. Why is that? Look at the um, yeah, the rate's really quite low. Um, bear me just one sec. Set the network connection, see if that makes any difference. Pain rate is definitely on the low side. Hold on one sec. That's a higher frame rate. If it will stay up there, uh, I think that's improved my frame rate. But um, can I see the throughput? Let me know if it's changed. I post. Uh, I'm hoping that what I just did has. Um, improve things slightly. 
let me know um, <clears throat> what the stream is like in terms of frame rate and stuff before I carry on. At least I'm in the green now. It's weird how it does that. I think it's the router. It's not the local switch here, it's the router at the other side where it plugs into the um, the uh, fibre router. Hi Laurie. I've been having some frame rate problems, but I think I think we're back to normal now. Any luck? But uh, keep me informed. I'm assuming the audio is good. Let me know if it isn't. And I have my tea, so I'm equipped. So I'll kind of start again. I haven't really covered anything anyhow because of the issues. Um, how is everyone? I knew you meant hi, Laurie. Hi four, is that like an abbreviated high five? Is that like one of those? The fumbless. <laughs> but just clean my lenses whilst we uh, get things up and running. Yeah, frame frame rate looks to have stabilised now at a much higher rate. That's really odd the way it does that. I think it's basically the uh, internet uh, slash fibre router. It's, it throws a wobbler every now and then, and you have to reset the connection. Otherwise, and I don't mean the internet connection. I mean the connection into the network, the Ethernet. Um, they're just a bit shit, I think. Oh, what's happened to my camera? That's really weird. What is that showing? Very odd. It's showing an old picture, it's not showing the live camera. Anyhow, I don't need that at the moment. So, um, let us commence. I'm going to assume um, frame rate's good now and everyone's hunky dory. So, uh, I'm just going to show some changes that I made. Um, Remember last week I showed that I'd changed the um, Black Ice NXT and added Wi-Fi to the uh, uh, the one with the Q spy memory. Well, it was annoying me a bit, so I decided that I'd also um, um, do something on the um, the Hyperbus Black Ice Hyperbus. Um, the black ice next with hyper flash and hyper ramp um, here so what I've done here now I didn't have any IOs left over for the FPGA because obviously we're using a lot more with the hyper hyper ram and the hyper flash than we would be using Q spine memory um, but uh, what I've done is I've added in Wi-Fi as an option here the same um, ESP32 C3 Mini, which has the RISC V, the, I think it's 160 megahertz RISC RISC V, uh, which has a cache as well, and um, that does Wi-Fi and it also does Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. So um, I've added that in, and what I've done is I've attached it uh, via SPI to the microcontroller as well as through the UART. So it has two modes of communication, but it connects directly to the, uh, 
STM32 rather than the FPGA. Um, I don't think it's a huge issue. You still get the benefits of going Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. What this means is we can do serial over Bluetooth, for example, from the um, from the STM32. Um, we might also be able to update the uh, STM32 that way as well, which reminds me actually. Uh, um, where should I put that? Let's make a note. They completely forgot about that. Um, hold your horses, folks. Uh, no. annoying I've installed it let me use um, let me just use uh, them Sorry, bear with me a second, folks. Um, no, text. Uh, I had lots of fun over the weekend, by the way. Um, just um, putting together the um, final existing stock of the black ice um, current versions and uh, some p mods and stuff things like um, I built a bunch of these because these are the popular ones which are the um, seven segment p mods um, it was a bit annoying actually because if you look really 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 closely <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can get this. Uh, I use resistor arrays. You can't actually see them there. But I ran out of the resistor arrays for a certain value. So I had to use individual 0603s in the same position. You can just see them there. That That's a pain because it means that you have to, um, you know, to do one of these takes three times as long maybe even four or five times as long actually and i did a whole bunch of these to go with the final black ice um board because i know how popular these are um everyone likes those and i managed to do a few more of the um red ball ones use the last of these up um because again these are uh, very popular only these have really long pins on them because that's all the ones I had. It's actually quite useful on the uh, breadboard because the breadboards are quite deep and the ball can sometimes sit above the breadboard anyhow. So having the longer pins is useful. And then of course I did the, uh, you know, the proverbial uh, carrier boards. These are the buggers because there's a hundred and, you know, about 120 different joints that have to be soldered. So what a joyous Sunday was spent doing such things for all of those as well. I'm kind of glad that I won't be doing any more of those, quite frankly. Anyhow, I was going to make a note. Um, what was I going to make the note about? Not to forget to connect. Dear for you. Uh, home notes. Uh, um, connect to 
HP layer came from um, GSP V2 2 DFU pin slash boot um, STM V2 to enable wireless updates of I've got to be a bit careful with that though for the simple reason that um, 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 because sometimes you get these circular issues where I have the I have a capability where the STM can reset the ESP32 and then the 30, ESP32 can change the way that the STM32 boots you've got to watch you don't get yourself in the loop um, I think to update the STM32 uh, the ESP32 you have to press buttons on the board there's no other way of doing it um, to change the base firmware but once you've got that firmware in there say for example you install I don't know MicroPython or um, CircuitPython then the updates are you know just like the normal way that you could do them they can either be done over the REPL or they you know and I'll come back to that because that uses serial port or they can be done over Bluetooth because now or certainly with CircuitPython, you can use Bluetooth to do the updates. I'm not sure with MicroPython whether it works that way. But anyhow, the, uh, I have the uh, UART for the ESP32 connected to the UART on the STM32. The STM32, in addition, has the USB CDC. So we can talk to the REPL or use serial to the ESP. 32 through the um, STM32 as well so uh, that's useful and then the other way uh, we can use we can take the uh, serial port from the STM32 and have that connect over Bluetooth for example through the ESP32 so there's lots of different combinations there and in addition to the UART stuff um, I'm actually connecting the uh, ESP32 to the SPI on the STM32 so the two can talk to each other using SPI. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that and we can talk about that. Um, how best to arrange that. There's different ways of looking at it. My glasses are definitely a bit dirty. So one of the things I was thinking is we could, for example, have the STM32 in master SPI mode, which it will be by default. I think switching dynamically is not necessarily a good idea unless we bit bang. You know, it's either master or slave, not both. And given that the uh, STM32 external flash is on the same SPI channel, um, that's only really used for loading images over the FPGA. Um, it's a good idea to make put the STM32 in charge of the SPI link. So if we did that, um, that enables, I mean, one thing I haven't played with yet that I want to play with is um, there is some support in CircuitPython. I'm not sure how deep it is, but uh, certainly in MicroPython, they have async support. And I think you can put async support on the SPI side um, to make a nice little, um, you know, Python-based app that's async-based, um, which will react to incoming stuff on the SPI. But there's a number of different possible usage patterns between the uh, Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth 
and the way that interacts with the STM32 or the entire system in fact. So one of the obvious ones is you could do updates over the air, which is kind of handy. Uh, secondly, the most obvious one is just to do the serial port over Bluetooth so that, you know, say you were building a robot or something and it was mobile, battery powered, then you'd have a way to get some telemetry back. So telemetry applications, um, you know, using uh, basically UART, um, converted over Bluetooth is probably the easiest way and then you can do more sophisticated network type things with the Wi-Fi um, and the SPI um, you could actually have it you could actually have an app running in MicroPython or CircuitPython on the ESP32 which is reacting to data coming to and from the STM32 um, and that's a slightly different that's a that's a, going a step beyond if you like, um, rather than it just being a kind of a, a dumb, you know, UART to Bluetooth type um, application to actually something a bit more active that's designed to run a kind of, if you like, a orchestration slash communication app, wireless communications app on the, um, on the ESP32. Risk five that's running on that. Um, I don't know. How, how how would you use it, Laurie? For example, I know you use the um, the Euro, the Wi-Fi and the Eurolex three. I don't know what how flexible that is and what it allows you to do, um, or whether this will be more flexible or not. You can also update the FPGA as well, but it'll be done indirectly via the STM thirty two. I post also, you know, let me know your thoughts on how you might use the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is definitely going to be an option is what I'm saying on the Black Eyes NXT board, even with the Hyper RAM. Um, I think it's uh, a really nice option to have, but you need to include it uh, when you order the board. Otherwise, you'd have to solder it on yourself. Not only that, there's a few other components that I add in. So, for example, here uh, we've got two switches which are for resetting and boot uh, configuration, which I'd only populate if I'm populating the Wi-Fi because they're not used otherwise. Uh, the flash is going to be there anyhow because that's connected to the STM32. We need that. Um, That's the only major difference. The other thing I did was I moved um, the, um, you know, the serial jack rather than pointing down here. I'd moved it so it points out here, and I've moved the mode button, the DFU mode button, because you work, you don't really need the mode button that much. You're more likely to use this on a regular basis. So having that come out the front is much better. So there's a slight rearrangement before I um, finalised it. Um, I moved the LED as well, that's now next to the uh, debug connector. Apart from that, I think it's, it's pretty much the same. There was some clear up areas and some optimizations and things, but really the big change is the Wi-Fi, which is what I wanted to um, talk about today, to get people's opinion. Uh, Laurie says on the Eurolex 3S is an SPI master. Okay, so um, okay. Now, is that advantageous or disadvantageous in this situation from your perspective, Laurie? Does it matter? It goes direct to the FPGA. Uh, yeah, well, we're not going direct to the FPGA in this case, so. This goes direct to the STM32, which in turn can pass things on to the FPGA. So the usage pattern may differ slightly. I mean, its primary concern is wireless communication, but it also has this application or wireless app 
um, by running MicroPython or um, CircuitPython on it because it supports both. That's the kind of cool thing, you know, how far you take that or not. I mean, it's great for doing testing and things like that. You know, if you want to set up testing stuff. Um, oh, I'll tell you what else I did. The um, In order to put the Wi-Fi here, the Wi-Fi module, the C3 module, which is a C3 mini, by the way, um, I moved the SD card. So it's now at the top. So you load that in via the aperture. So that shouldn't interfere with anything because once the card's in, it's in. But yeah, I, I figured it's better to have this here and that there than the other way around. Uh, so use MicroPython on the UNX 3S. That's interesting. I mean, we can make the C3 a master. I'm just not sure if that's advantageous in this case. I really like the idea of using an async um, Python app. I one that responds to information that's either coming from the STM32 or that's coming over Bluetooth or um, Wi-Fi. I mean, really, the ESP32 is a communication device. You can think of it as, you know, if you think about the traditional uh, setup of, um, you know, vehicular setups, you know, space vehicles and stuff, you normally have a separate communications processor for obvious reasons. Um, um, so that you can always communicate and have it do certain things like reset the device, etc. Um, at the moment, it isn't capable of resetting. Let me just make a note of that because we could add that. But would we want to? Is the question. Uh, hmm. Good point. I think iPost is around, but he's not commenting. I'm guessing he's still working or something. Oh, what have we done here? Hold on. Seem to have been missing a bunch of spaces.
Um, the U ULX3S has several other pins between the ESP32 and the FPGA, one of which is used as a GPIO pin with an interrupt handler to take interrupts from the FPGA. Um, with SPI, you don't really need that because you have the CS, the chip select pin. I, I mean, if you're a master, you need that. But if you're a slave, you don't need that. The CS pin does that for you. But yeah, if, if, if we switched it to being a master, then that might be an issue. We might need to add another pin, which is a problem because I don't think I've got any spare pins to change that. So the usual way of using it is with an SPI RAM slave on the FPGA, which allows loading programs, debugging soft cores, etc. I mean, we kind of we will have that functionality built in on the STM32 anyhow. So it's just a case of that information being relayed over wireless. Because we have to build that functionality into the STM32 anyhow. So it's got to be able to do this when for the users that don't have a Wi-Fi option. Because not everyone's going to go for the Wi-Fi option, I'm sure. Oh, it also supports the on-screen display logo. Uh, that's less of an issue for this because this isn't really aimed at retro. Uh, I'm not sure whether OSD will be useful in that regard. Any OSD done here is done through the STM32 effectively because that has the LCD connection. I tend to use web REPL over Wi-Fi to talk to the ESP32. I'm kind of in two minds about how to program this. I mean, it'll be fun when I start playing with it, but um, you have this kind of simple thing of you open a Python file, you edit it on the device and save as you're going along. But I kind of don't really like that in many ways, even though it sounds really convenient. And I can see that if you were coming into the, you know, embedded world from Python, um, that would be a useful thing to have it kind of works the way that you expect it to but in reality it's a bit of a nightmare and it kind of I've gotten myself into all sorts of problems by doing that by not saving older versions when I should have done um, and stuff like that because my procedure for updating the running firmware is effectively um, um, is not formal in any way it's just hacking stuff which is fine, but um, you can end up going down cul-de-sacs and breaking stuff and not being able to come back out very easily. So I'm not entirely happy with that modus operandi, um, which you can do in Circuit Python, obviously. And if you're doing it over Bluetooth, you probably don't want to be doing it that way because the traffic going backwards and forwards is probably going to be, slow you down a little bit anyhow. I prefer being able to, you know, run a command to update it. You know, to say, well, my local version's changed, and change it on the device, rather than it be done automatically on a save. Um, that's just my personal preference. Um, and using the web wrapper is also useful from a kind of hacky point of view as well, if you want to do that. Um, without the issues of getting out of date files or cul-de-sac files. Uh, we also run an FP, FTP server on ESP32. Right. But you could certainly easily do that. I mean, yeah, it's not the most convenient protocol, but yeah. I guess it's low overhead. 
in terms of network transmission of files. Um, the C3, by the way, has four megabytes of flash internally. Which you can kind of use as a file system or permanent storage, semi permanent storage. UNX 3S also supports pass through of UART from the FTDI by the FPGA TSP32. So you can run REPL over terminal connection from the host. Hold on. Let me just get my head around that. Sorry. No. The ULX3 also supports pass through of UART from the FTDI via the FPGA to the ESP32. So you can run a REPL over the terminal connection from the host. Well, theoretically, you can do that here as well. You could use the CDC UART have that pass through internally the STM32 up to the uh, ESP32 because there is a UART connection between the two as well as the SPI connection so you could make that either way if that's what you wanted. And the other good thing is you don't need to burn anything into the FPGA in order for communication to occur because it's, you know, the ESP32 is talking to the STM32, so it's, it just uses the firmware on board. You do need to have firmware, obviously, on the STM32 to communicate with it, at least at basic levels. Uh, the ULX3 air source supports pass through of UART from the FPGA and ESP32, so you can repair the terminal connection to the host. Yeah, I just covered that, didn't I? Um, finding the right balance with the use of the UART and the um, SPI. I guess. It's a bit hard to think about, Laurie says, it's a bit hard to think about how I would use ESP32 and Black Ice NXT. I would need to experiment and think a bit more about it. Indeed. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I opened the conversation. I, I just thought it'd be a good idea to have it on there. It is optional. You don't have to take it. But if you've got it, then there are different ways in which you can use it. You know, all the way from it being a wireless serial port to the STM32 through to running a MicroPython or Circuit Python app you know, utilizes UART, SPI, etc. The STM32 makes things a lot different. Yes, but it also has some convenience in that you don't have to program the FPGA in order to do anything useful. But of course, I'm making the assumption that you've got firmware on there. Um, you know, in terms of firmware on the STM32. Uh, 
Anyhow, I think it's a nice addition. And we will have to have a think about that. Um, now let me know your thoughts, I post, if you are listening, if you're working, obviously. You know, just put a comment in the video afterwards. But yeah, I think it'd be useful to have, let's put it that way. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having to play around with it. I especially like to have Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth. It's kind of cool to have both of those, which is why I like the C3 device. Um, the S3 looks good as well, but they're like, um, the mini modules are like rocking horse uh, crap, unfortunately, very difficult to get. You can get uh, a RAMless version, but not. A lot of the stuff there is early versions for development, not for um, production. That's really all that I have um, pre-planned for the stream, but we can do all about anything. Um, I would like to use the S3, but I don't think, you know, the availability is going to be good for a little while on that. Yeah. Maybe we, when we get to the ESP versions of boards, we can put an S3 on that. The advantage of the S3 over the S2, by the way, is that you've got Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. You also have dual core, which isn't necessary, but I guess might be useful if you're running more intense stuff but given that we've already got uh, the STM32 on there um, we don't exactly need a another dual core running Um, I need to order them on Monday, the new boards. That's my deadline. Um, they are still making them, but they're just not shipping them. So I'm not losing a huge amount of time at the moment. Because of the lockdowns in Shenzhen. But yeah, I've got to order them by Monday. So all the changes have to be in by then. I'm probably just going to order this one. I'm not going to order the other one yet. And I'm going to order the seven segment tile, VGA tile, and the Proto slash PMOD tile for now. So yeah, if you want anything changing, you have to let me know this week. It's the last possible week. I still have no idea. I've talked to them and I have no idea when I'm going to get them back. They can't predict on shipping and stuff. They've got all sorts of problems with um, getting stuff in and out. I mean, the situation is basically the same as it was. Maybe slightly worse, but probably about the same. As a summary. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, the other thing that I do connect is the um, C3 does have a like a JTAG serial slash USB. So I take that down to the um, power delivery USB connector because obviously we're using the top one as the main communications thing for the STM32. So you can get access to it on the um, power delivery power delivery USB. So you probably wouldn't be using that in normal operation, but you might want to use that on your programming it or debugging. But you could obviously trying to do power delivery in that at the same time is a bit awkward. I mean it could be done. I was thinking of building uh, something that splits them out as well at some point to give even more choices. I mentioned we've got the uh, kind of reset switch and the boot switch the ESP that you can get to from the aperture up here next to the SD card I'm kind of happy with it now I don't want to change anything the only thing I'm doing at the moment is just doing error checking and stuff like that before I send them off power playing optimizations that kind of stuff not functional changes. I did play with the idea for a while of using an S3 rather than a C3. Um, primarily because it adds a little bit more, um, you can get it with built in um, flash, um, spark, Q spy RAM. But you lose the Bluetooth. I, I'd just love to have the Bluetooth really. Given, you know, its position in the chain. Um. Yeah, that's it. No other changes on there. Not since last time. I'm looking forward to um, having one in my hand to play with. That'd be so cool. It's taken a long time, <laughs> frankly. <sighs> What initial projects are you thinking of doing on this board? Um, well, I've got to get all the firmware working. Really, that's my primary primary goal. I can do some of that with the existing prototype, but some of it I can't. Um, I'd really like to do a robotics thing, but that won't be the first thing I do. Um, I do have a couple of um, tiles to make to test. These are slightly out of date now because they're actually the wrong dimensions, but I can do an electrical test for it potentially. Um, 
got to do all the documentation, obviously. But we do that as we're going along with the firmware, using the mbook stuff that we did before. I would love to do a robotics project. Although I'm not sure which one. Do you have anything in mind that you want to do? Nori? I mean, it's going to be a fairly powerful system, really. There's a lot that you can do. Yeah, you could update your simple robot. That'd be cool. I do have some um, chassis to make a simple robot, actually. Um... Uh, what would I need? I'd need to get us some tiles. One thing that I can do, what I did look at is Isla in, um, I think they're in Germany, Austria. I can get tiles made there at reasonable cost with a really quite a quick turnaround. I'm probably going to do that. The only disadvantage is, I mean, they're no good for the high-res stuff. But if you just want to do like um, simpler two-layer or even four-layer, as long as the specs aren't too high, you can get it done through Isla quite easily at reasonable cost. The only disadvantage is you end up with green boards, which will look a bit odd when um, placed on the um, black ice, which is going to be black board obviously they always are but for testing purposes that doesn't matter do I think my mechanism of trying out the various different tile boards will be getting them done at Isla first moving forward after this initial batch because I can turn them around quicker it doesn't take long to get them from Isla Uh, with the hyper ram, the obvious thing to try is one of Sylvan's wrist five socks. Yeah, what do they call it? Uh, number two FPGA? No, number two sock or something? Does he call it? Yeah, I need to get him some hardware as well, so that he can, um, you know, get the hyper bus optimized. I was going to order um, 10 boards in total rather than five. Uh, one for myself. So I we've got up to nine people that could be on the uh, core dev. Which would be good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, once once he gets the hyper ram stuff done, he'll he'll get his uh, SOCs working on it. So that'll be advantageous, and hopefully he can package them in a way that uh, work in a friendly way with him, uh, with Amaranth or Amaranth, should I say? Um, yeah, 
I mean, I wanted to get all of the example stuff done. So I'll probably do the, you know, the getting started stuff as well. I'll do that first. Make sure that the tiles that we've got all work and have some kind of demo software. Before I actually do a proper project. Um, but yeah, I haven't thought about what I'm going to do with it in terms of first project because I've just been so busy sorting it out and trying to get damn components and PCBs ordered and all the shipping pain in the arse stuff that's going on right now. It just seems to be taking up my time doing immense amounts of admin and working around logistic issues and God knows what else. Uh, I'm hoping to fix the MyStorm site as well. I might have some good news on that front soon. Say so might. Had a bit of a breakthrough. But uh, I'm not going to count those particular chickens until they hatch. What is wrong with these glasses? Have I smudged them with something? Yeah, it'd be interesting to you uh, play around with the um, hyper RAM, see how well it performs. Because I have no experience of using hyper RAM. I'm intrigued to see how well it performs. You know, in a either streaming type or um, in the SOC configurations. I'm intrigued to see how well it performs. One thing I did think about doing is like a, a kind of a plus version, if you like, of the Black Ice Next. And what I'd do is I'd up the Hyper RAM from 64 megabit to 128 megabit. I was looking into sourcing some. Again, it's the like flipping hen's teeth getting these chips um, but I'm looking into sourcing um, a number of um, slightly larger hyper RAM chips um, so rather than the 64 megabit one that we will we will have a standard is perhaps trying to source 128 or even the 256 uh, megabit chip. I don't know if I'll be able to get the 256 ones. I mean, that they, you know, there are some listed, but availability is really actually quite tricky with this hyperram stuff, I found. But it might be nice to have a slightly um, larger hyperram in some cases. Most of the time you don't need it for the sort of stuff we're working on. Um, I know uh, Sylvan wants more, but that's because he does mad things like try to run Linux and stuff on them. Um, you wouldn't normally want that much. You wouldn't normally need that much uh, RAM. Um, or would you? Maybe Laurie needs that much RAM for something. <laughs> Ooh. Um, the other thing I had an issue with. Uh, I'm still having an issue is these um, ESD chips for the USB. I still got to sort that issue out. 
I need to experiment with that because the ones I have on the proto board are still being a bit weird and I can't quite work out why. I might omit them all together but um, it seems a shame when I've already got them not to be able to use them because it does provide a little bit more protection which is useful. I did um, think of doing a, um, some point building like a, what do they call it? Like a automated farm bot, something like that. That might be fun. Uh, a non-vision base to start with and then later on a vision based one but I, I the vision stuff I'd probably wait for an ECB5 version because um, you have to crank so many more um, cycles and arithmetic to do the video stuff it's pretty intensive particularly if you want to use something like uh, the TensorFlow light or something similar because it really is quite you know intense on the processor um, one of the things I was looking at for the ESP5 version was using the um, 400 megahertz H7s which give us a bit more uh, leverage a bit more power to crunch through video stuff Yeah, a non-visual uh, farm bot would be kind of cool, i.e. for the fixed, fixed management, whereby it's not doing real-time video, it's doing, you know, maybe a bit, a few stills, that kind of thing. You can easily handle that stuff. I mean, I might do that for autumn. So I was thinking of building um, some like farm bot frames to do that. That's quite an interesting project. Um, basically, you have like a Cartesian arrangement. So you have a large frame or frames in the garden and then you put rails down the side and then you can you have a Cartesian controlled arrangement to move it around and you have a relatively simple camera that takes stills um, and that is just used to manage things like um, uh, growth watering um, maybe picking out weeds that kind of stuff so it's not like vision as in driving, you know, like a proper automated farm uh, robot. It's more like a Cartesian automation system with some very simple um, still video. It says like a contradiction, some simple video or still processing. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can offload the processing as well. Uh, one of the things I'd probably need to make that feasible is get the Ethernet tile done, perhaps with some PoE support, because that's a great way of um, doing the connectivity. Because uh, you can... Uh, Mind you, it depends. You know, if you're using a battery and solar power, it could be right next to the Cartesian arrangement, in which case the USB uh, or 
power delivery over USB is, is more than adequate. You don't need to um, to use Ethernet, and then you can use Wi-Fi, etc., or Bluetooth to transfer any telemetry or data. Assuming you've got a reasonable distance, you know, and you can mount, you know, your receiver not too far from that. Um, even though the direct retro can't be done, the a kind of um, RISC V uh, uh, retro core stuff, maybe with some graphics, could be done. That'd be interesting. I'm sure iPost wants to work on some of that stuff as well. Um, this first version of Black Ice NXT does not have the LCD, so we can't do projects that need that. There is an LCD connector connected to the STM32 at the top here. And I do have some LCDs in mind. That's a 16-bit um, 8080 like parallel connection. So we can use that. Um, and I do have some LCDs in mind that I want to try with that. I post this. My Risk Soft Core would fit. Yeah, it certainly would. And you'd have more RAM than you can shake a stick at with a Hyper RAM. Something like that. Yeah, the LCD connector's still on here. I haven't taken that off. Laurie. That's connected to the STM32, 16-bit, 8080 or 6800 type link. That's connected to the um, FPC bus. Sorry, FMC bus, not FPC. FMC bus in the STM32. That shouldn't be an issue. That's going to be fun getting that to work. That's all about timing. There's another thing on my list that I've got to sort out. Or experiment with. Here we are talking about me doing projects for this. And I've got all these other little bits that I have to do as well that are probably quite high priority. But yeah, it's going to be fun using the, um, the LCD if I can get it working. That would be a nice little bonus. Post says I ordered some 800 by 480 16-bit touch screens. Um,
Hold on. Let's just have a look. Let me show this. Sorry, you probably can't see this. Hold on. Let me get this on the screen. This is what iPost has ordered. OTM 8009A. Yeah, these look kind of cool. What's the pin out? Does it show the pin out somewhere? Kind of half see it there, but that looks backwards. Hold on. Yes, that's a 16-bit interface. Yeah, we can interface to that. That could potentially work, I suppose. But somehow you have to go from the FPC connector to that. I mean, we could do an adapter board. That's probably the easiest way of doing it. You know, like a PCB that has FPC on one side and then um, an IDC or 0.1 inch dual row header that fits with this on the other. Um... What the order's like? I think it's a different order of pins. I don't suppose they have a um, FPC connector, do they? Oh, that is that FPC? What kind of connector is that? Is that an FPC connector? It's odd. It goes up to fifty-one pins. If I'm reading that right, we used a 40 pin FPC connector. 51 is a lot. Yeah, so it's much wider. So we'd have to do an adapter. So, um, my post is saying I found the spec sheet for the OTM 8009A. Interesting.
Yeah, I mean the interface is compatible. Um, to get the touchscreen information, we'd somehow need to make a um, SPI connection as well. Screen IC chip select control pin. Yeah, we need to get SPI on there as well, somehow. Port module user manual. TM eight zero zero nine A uh, some good detail here. Oh, there's some example code. That's interesting. Um, oh, it's got the register information. That's interesting as well. It's useful. Good that there's some uh, example stuff that'll make it easier talking to it. You got me thinking now about the SPI. Probably there's some way of getting that easily connected. Yeah, this is good. Nice find I post. This is great. Hmm. Right, you got me wondering about the SPI. Um Could we do SPI? Now, um, I don't mean for driving the display. Um, I post. I'm talking about the touch control, reading the touch control. Has a touch controller built in that is SPI based. So if we can get SPI to it, we can read the touch control. Yeah, so if I go back to, where was it? It mentioned this. Here. 
here look so if you look at the pinout these pins these are for the touch control So we, you know, if you want to use the touch control, getting SPI to it is uh, kind of handy. I mean, you can um, um, you could take it off a P mod or something, but I was trying to think of a way of doing it. Um, doing it more directly. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it's an easy way. Of getting that information in. Um, I mean, on the board we have SPI in the locality. Yeah. These pins here are SPI, and there's the display connector. Oops, sorry, you won't be able to see that. Let me, um... so here's a display connector at the top, and here's our SPI signals. But that SPI is used initially to read the flash to get the image to program the FPGA with. But it's also used to communicate with the um, ESP32. Um, so I wouldn't really want to be tripling that up to use to read the touch. Um, yes. I mean, we could, um, you know. Use the, uh, you know, this top P mod, for example. Here. Let's connect you to the FPGA. We could use that. I was just wondering if we could somehow connect some of those pins into here, but the trouble with doing that is not every display is going to use the same pinouts and could something connecting to the 40 pin FPC actually consume those pins even though they're not using them, i.e. pull them down and pull them up or something. I was just wondering if we could somehow get them onto here. There are some spare pins. But I can't remember what the spec was with those. I think there was only like... Um, let me just check. Hmm. It's two SPI DODA pins. But there isn't a clock pin. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't. Mm. Can't see any easy way of getting those onto the FPC connector. Yeah. Just to show you, here, let me see if I can share the. Um, 
Let me just switch to the schematic. Hold on. So if you look at the schematic pinout of that 40 pin connector, can you see the way I've marked it up? This is based on some existing displays that I've seen. So um, you have the 16 bit data bus, you have the control signals, which are the D ones here. This NS9 is a, it's, it's called a marker pin. I don't think it actually does anything. Um, the pins at the top here are analog effectively for touchscreen, analog signals, and I'm not using those. Again, this isn't necessarily very standard. That's the problem. They're all bloody different. Um, and then you've got the uh, backlight cathode pins there's three of those and you've also got the NO pin here which I connect to a transistor here a P sorry a P FET P channel MOSFET which I can modulate from the microcontroller I don't have a tear pin no Some of the parallels have a sync tear pin. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that works. Because what we're using is we're using the um, FMC interface on the microcontroller to drive it. I'm not sure whether you could synchronize that. Um, hmm. And again, the trouble is these pinouts aren't standard I post. These displays, it's very frustrating. So this doesn't have, as far as I know, a sync. Or the ones that I took this from, should I say, didn't have a sync. Hello, drink you back in. You can say hello. Did you finish your service? Shit. So I'm going to the folks on the stream. Oh, you're slightly wet. You were soaked earlier, weren't you, Twinkles? Don't know how you got so wet. Don't know where you've been. Pretty, pretty cat. Yeah, um, uh, did I have the data sheet? Let me see, did I have this loaded up on this machine? It might have been on my other, on my laptop. to dox myself um it's weird i'm not logging in as someone different here okay not helpful so I'm just looking to see if I've got a link to the um, displays <sighs> it's on the other machine I think which is a little annoying
Hmm. Okay, can't show you that easily. Um. But yeah, so on the um, diagram I have for this FPC connector and the LCDs that I found, two of the pins that I'm not connecting are what, what they call SPI pins. Well, again, it varies depending on the chip that you have or, or that they were offering. So here you had two extra SPI pins, but you need more than two because you need a clock. Um, so one of the other pins would normally tend to double up as a clock, but you'd only use the SPI pins when you're in SPI mode, not parallel mode, so that you could get away with using, I don't know which ones, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it would be one of these others. So you've got DCS, which is the select pin. You've got the register select pin. And you've got write enable, output enable, which are the 8080, the parallel pins. Um, the async control, transfer control pins. Um, I'm guessing one of those D whatever pins would double up as the... Um, clock pin. DCS I should imagine that acts as CS select um, so it has to be either DOE, DWE or DRS would then act as let, let me see if I can find the damn Link. Bear with me a sec. Let me just switch machines to see if I can. I'm just going to confuse myself by switching pin, switching machines, on my display. Come on. Not coming up. No signal. I hate it when it does this. Right, I'm up. So on here, um, let me get to the right thing. If I can put, oh, too many tabs open. Maybe it is this one. No, definitely not. Oh, how annoying. I can't find the damn thing now. I swear I had it bookmarked here. These ones are totally different. Um, no, those are 24 bit interfaces. Damn it, how can I have lost that? Well, maybe it's these. These are three point five inch screens. Copy. Uh, let me just um,
me switch back, hold on. Oh, come on, don't do that to me. Oh, so annoying. Rearranging my screen, hold on. Here's the ones that I was I was looking at. Let me can I bring this up. So on this one, um, these are 3.5 inch. Okay. There's different controllers for these, depending on what you choose. But if you look at the pinouts. Which we have here let me um see if i can on here this is where i'm taking the pinouts from so you've got the analog touch on these and then you've got f mark was pin eight F mark. Um, so yeah, you've got CSSPI. Oh, F mark is the test pin. Okay, interesting. I wasn't aware of that. F mark. Really weird name to use for that. So on this spy here. Yeah. The spy pins overlap with the um, register select and the write commands, which is frustrating. So it means that you can't do a full SPI in addition. F mark. I'd never heard them use F mark before. I was thinking F mark is just like a marker pin, like a duff pin like a key pin or something like that f mark weird so on here we have the f mark pin mm. could we use that interesting trouble is i've run out of pins on the bloody stm32 uh so i'm not sure we could use that frame mark. Is that what it, it stands for? Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> we're clean out of pins on the board. I don't think I can connect that one. But uh, we definitely can't get around this SPI problem. The SPI would have to go up a separate cable. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see how that'd be useful.
So the question is, if I was to use this pin then, here, where it says NS9, we haven't named it. You know, if we were to use that, um, we don't really. I mean, we have an interrupt pin here, which I could take there, but I was assuming the interrupt pin would be used in conjunction with the FPGA. Um, and if that's constantly firing, that could cause a problem. Which is annoying. Uh, I mean, I could root. Well, one could root. Right, let's put it that way. If you were going to separately root the SPI pins, you could separately root the um, uh, frame pin over the FPGA. And the FPGA in turn causes the interrupt. Um, I was just wondering if there's a way of doing it where you don't have to go through the FPGA. I mean, I've got a backlight pin here. Maybe that's surplus. We could swap backlight for a uh, frame pin. Ooh. Excuse me, I'm just going to get some more water. I'm just going to mute for a sec. Are you going to finish your supper off then? Um, I post says BL to me is optional. Yeah. Um. A lot of people don't use BL.
the oh excuse me tiring myself frame marker might be more preferential to the um backlight Mm, I could change that potentially I post it is a possibility a possible enhancement I'd say thank you for bringing that up definitely worth considering something on my glasses it's doing my head in what is that I spilled something on it annoying mark I don't think I can take any of the other pins away. They've all got very specific uses. Um, I think it would have to be uh, sacrificing um, the backlight control. Oh, back to in course. How can we help you? Have you been finishing your supper? Have you been finishing your supper? Very purry this evening. Very purry cat. Can I go out? Everyone, here you go, Anthony. Doing it. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Laurie's listening at the moment. I suppose she's probably busy doing something. I will have a look a bit later, I think, but maybe I will swap those two around. However, do we automatically just enable the backlight then by default? Is that the best thing to do? So it's always on. One hundred percent. Can't believe I've run out of pins with all these microcontroller pins on here. Hundred pins here, yeah, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Nuts. Mind you, we are using 16 of them. No, 20 of them to drive the LCD. You guys, you guys know more about driving the LCDs than I do. So Laurie's saying um, I think backlight always on is probably okay. All right, I might do that change then. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow morning. Cool. Well spotted, I post. 
Well spotted. Those displays that you're getting look interesting. The only problem from our point of view is having to get the SBI out there as well. That's if you want to use the touch. Is the touch optional? Optional. So when you buy those LCDs, are they available with and without touch? Is that how it works? Or do they all come with touch? Um. You can get them with or without. Don't know how useful touch is. Depends on the application, I guess. Um, <sighs> yeah, so with touch. So what's the difference? £9.82 versus £9.13 on here. So bugger all difference in price, really. So you probably get it with touch, even if you weren't using it. Then you've got it, haven't you? These are interesting displays. Um, how much are they? 982. Well, the ones I would. Um, what size is this? This is 4 inch, right? Hold on. Ones I were looking at were 3.5 inch, I think. Uh, these are a bit smaller, they're 3.5 inch, they're a bit lower cost. Yeah, crikey, there's a lot of different um, configurations. So the ones I was looking at were slightly smaller, but also slightly... Um, Slightly less. What are they saying? Shipping is two pounds sixty nine. Hold on. What are they saying? Shipping is for your one. Let me move this because it's doing my head in. Shipping is three pound thirty. Yeah. So I think yours is nearly twice the price for the extra half inch. Also, yours is higher resolution. Um, one problem with that is 800 by 6, 480 takes up a lot of pixel space. We wouldn't have enough memory on the STM32 to do every pixel, so you'd have to double up your pixels. Um, but I like the fact that they've got an SPI touch controller rather than the analog stuff. So who, who are, so, and I like the documentation as well. Uh, the, um, these, these look very good. LCD wiki documents. The only thing that isn't good about this is the fact that it has this really weird 51 pin connector. Or the, uh, you know, 0.1 inch headers. Whereas what I was looking at, of course, was I was thinking of connecting these directly using the 40 pin connectors straight into the FPC. But yeah, there's a heck of a lot of different LCDs available. Very few of them are compatible with each other in terms of pinouts, which is bloody annoying.
Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can't see. So this, the uh, price of this, the one I was looking at here, um, this is five pounds plus two sixty nine shipping. With touch, it's five pounds seventy three. So there's a similar price difference between touch and no touch. However, I'm not wiring up the touch on these because they're analog touch. Which is a pain in the ass. But yeah, if you wanted no touch, then these are quite reasonably priced. And the number of pixels is good for the amount of memory we've got on the STM32. So it's a lower resolution. Um, I'd have to look at this controller. That might be on... Uh, There's a 4.3 mass capacitive touch. No, that's SPI. Yeah, so for non-touch type applications, I quite like this one. So that's kind of the way that I've... Um, Wired it. It'd be so much better if they had SPI control touch, you know, on these pins. That would be so much better if that was available. It's so bloody frustrating that they're all different. Do, 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 do. Yeah. As I said, it's a bit of a minefield, not only because there's different um, pinouts, but there's so many different screens to choose from. Finding the right one is actually pretty difficult. Um. No, each is different because one goes into a toaster and another goes into a fridge. Yeah, indeed. What was the other thing I was going to check? So on yours here, the one that you're looking at, uh, what's the physical? Free, well, what? 3.97 super inch. So what are the dimensions? See, that's a bit wide. See, what I was thinking with the one that I chose is it will sit nicely on the um, back of the board in terms of width. The one that you've chosen here is slightly wider. Not by much. Because the board is going to be a hundred wide. So yours is slightly wider. I think that's why I went 3.5 inch in the end. Then I knew I could fill it in. Right, okay, cool, good. 
Um, yeah, it looks like a nice find though, that display. I particularly like that. I wonder, so what was I looking at? It was uh, What happens if I look this up on that site you were using? Hold on. This looks similar, but not necessarily the same, because this is mounted. I know this can't be right. What about, I'm just seeing um, what references there are on here to these ones. So if I look at the 486, 9486, No, that's different. So a lot of these add this touch controller, don't they? Interestingly. That's what that is there. That converts the analogue into um, spy. Which is interesting. None of these have the frame thing. Oh, yeah. 
Mix Goats, what are you doing? Yeah. Chat, where are you going? What else have they got here? Four inch page text. 3.4 inch RPI display. No. 9488 is common controller. Um, as is the eight six. Um, um, where's the, um, See, there's also the data sheet for the um, for the controller. Boy, a lot of sections to this. Wowzer. Yeah. T E pin you say. So the T E pin is the um frame mark pin, right? This one. Let me go through, thanks. Mm -hmm. So the manual will be useful anyhow, even if I can't see the, um, the only thing I was wondering was, what is interesting is this, um, touch controller. They mention that here. I think the you can get these touch controllers. Um, hold on.
a look at this one. Um, you need to make up your mind where you want to be, Twinkles, either in here or in there. Is nobody giving you any attention? Is that a problem? So these are I squared C. Uh, key 1 to key 6. Touch key input. These are, no, these are no good. These are wrong types. Uh, I wish I knew what I was looking for. Hold on. LCD display modules. Uh, um, touch screen control controllers. Data converters. Uh, what do I want? Oh, I squared C or serial. SPI copy that that uh, wow these are quite is it resistive or capacitive the um, one you had let me have a look um, touch screen module. Is it capacitive? Is that what you're saying? Four wire resistive. No. I'm pretty sure I've seen these before actually. The search on LCLS, sorry, LCSC aren't always brilliant. Um, or oh, high intention mode twinkles. Hmm? I'm searching on the internet for stuff. Not spending time stroking you, I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't. Analog devices. No. I was looking for a Asian thing. Um. These are. Touch screen. Four wire resistive, four or five wire resistive, five wire resistive. These aren't what I'm looking for. These are not the chips I am looking for. Having capacitive there isn't helping my search. Um, search on LC, SC is a bit rubbish, unless you know that part. Um, What did I do last time? It seems to give me slightly different um, results. Damn it. What does mine say? I'm 
pretty sure that there are some fairly standard low cost Asian touch uh, controls. Probably doesn't say on here. Touch and no touch. What does it say? Doesn't really talk about the touch much. So I mean this is just raw, it's analog. And that needs converting. Um hmm. I don't suppose we can crib it, can we? Yeah. Is it twinkles? Is nobody giving you attention this evening? What's a cat got to do to get attention, eh? I'm guessing that these are all, um, hold on, let's get past this. Let's, let's do this. Let's get the Asian ones near the top. I've, I've been through this curve before. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, um, So that's I squared C. That looks like a keyboard type controller rather than a pastic touch thing. I think it's that one. XP twenty forty six. Well done. There we go. So if you know the name, it's so much easier. Oh, twinkles. You come up here. Oh, you are high intention mode. You can help me with this data sheet, twinkles. No? I'm not interested. Can I go out again then? Where do you want to go? Through this door? Be back in a minute. I bet there's no one in the lounge, that's why. So the kids are out, away. Let's have a look. <clears throat> yeah, this is the one. Yes, 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 this is the one. Cool, nice and simple. See, what I was wondering is, could I do the interface for this? So what is it? It's a TSOP 16 or a QFN 16. It's even BGA. So what is this one here? TSOP 16. How much are these? See, they're very low, very low cost. It's not very low, but reasonable cost. 33 cents. Um. 
you know, it's like, well, is it worth putting one of those on the board? Maybe. I put one of these. Oh, better not dox myself. <laughs> it would give a wide range of displays to choose from. I was just wondering if it's worth putting the footprint on the board. Um, my problem is I then need SPI to connect to it. Or, or could I use FPGA pins? Interesting. One to look at, I post. Oh. LCD connections are such a pain. I wonder if there's any other way we can do it. rather than putting the connector directly on there on here but have some other sort of connection that means that we add a an adapter board that fits in this aperture maybe and the adapter board is what does the conversion to whatever the display is and or adds the touch What kind of connector would could would we use? Um, because you need a lot of pins. We need twenty odd. Oh, excuse me. Twenty four, twenty five, something like that. No more than that, in fact. Um. Hmm. Is there a better way of doing this? Something to think about, yeah. One adapter could have a touch controller or another not one. <laughs> Twinkle's back again. What is up with you tonight, Kat? I'm gonna leave the door open because otherwise you're just gonna be in and out, aren't you? Are you coming up here? No? Or just after lots of attentions today, aren't you? Has, my, has she gone to bed? Is that what the problem is? Is that why? Because you're not getting any attention from anyone else. They've all gone to bed, have they? Ah, oh, high attention cat. The trouble is, when I left her up, I end up with fur all over my desk. I have to give it a good clean afterwards. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth thinking about. But the question is, I mean, what would be nice? So let me just show you, because I just realized, uh, is. So on here, right, see where we've got the FPC connector? 
on the top here this thing we can have some sort of connector here where a small board the size of this aperture plugs in an adapter board if you like a you uh, that's unique to the display but we can't can't easily use a tile as a, an adapter because there's not enough pins we're talking about needing 16 for the data four for the control data control pins transfer pins that's 20 then you need SPI that's another four so that's 24 plus you need your power you also need a blanking pin you need um, a frame pin so it's 26 um, you might also need the cathode nanode pins mode pin etc so yeah you're talking some nearly 30 pins so you can't do it on a tile even a double tile you'd be pushing it um you know we've got the microcontroller here that can connect to it so Maybe um, if there was some sort of connector here that you could put the adapter thing. You've got the aperture here where you could insert something. But what sort of connector would you have that that would plug into? That's the tricky thing. Um... I mean, maybe you could use a high density, a 1.27 mil double row connector, but I don't know if you can get those easily in a right angled um, format. Zig connector. Zig, that uh, rings a bell, but Zig. Or are you thinking of the um, Wizig connectors or whatever they're called? The bus pins. Those, those are really expensive, actually. Um, those probably wouldn't be any good. Um, I was just wondering, though, if you had a, like a right-angled 1.27 pin connector, that might work. Trouble is you'd need a right-angled female on the adapter board, and I'm not sure... I've ever seen those. Twinkles. You are high intentions today. I mean, answers. There's nobody giving you the attention you deserve. Um, what about the one that the Pi CM4 uses? Yeah, that's a possibility. Although, again, you've got the same problem. Um, of it not being a right angle connector. 
that would mean the board would then have to be like a full length board that sits on the back of that and I'm not sure that would work. I'm thinking that FPC is the way to go and then you use a FPC connector maybe. Sorry, an FPC adapter. So it has FPC on one side and FPC on the other side. And maybe it has a touchscreen chip on it as well, optionally. So it just does FPC to FPC. of high tensions today. I use that. There is. Right, okay, I'm going to have a think about that. I think I'm going to call it for the stream. But it is going to be an issue that we're going to need to resolve somehow. Some sort of adapter is almost inevitable. Um, and we can't use the connectors um, directly like, uh, you know, the female version of this, because it's too big. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, seventeen. Yeah, that's a forty thirty four pin connector. Um which is gonna be how wide is that? So that's two point five four sorry. 2.54 mil times 17. That's actually 18 because you have to have one. That's 45. 45.7 millimeters wide, which is too big to fit in the in the aperture here. Um, I mean, the whole tile is 50. You can fit it on a tile width. But you can't fit it inside the aperture. And then again, it'd be pointless anyhow because the pinouts of these aren't standard, right? So effectively, what our adapter will be doing is what this is doing here, what this board is doing. It's converting from whatever their FPC connector is to these connections. So what I'm thinking is we have a an FPC to FPC board or a range of FPC to FPC boards to suit different um, LCDs. So there's FPC in one side, FPC out the other, and there may be a chip on it like, a, you know, a, touch controller I mean the only problem is that means you have two um, ribbons there is one other possibility Adafruit have just done something hold on hold on what did they do they tried to create a standard
Now it wasn't this. Hold on. What did they call it? There we go. this connection this is to uh but this is only 18 pins this is not going to be wide enough is that the only size 18 pin Yeah, so they did this standard thing. So they call it uh, eyes, I spy. But it's only eighteen pins, so we couldn't use that. It's a shame. Oh, I'm not playing with those flexi pins. They're a nightmare. Really difficult to solder. Very fiddly. Right, I'm gonna have a think. Yeah, so what you need is like an ice spy cable that has like 30 pins or something. You probably need about 30 pins. I'll have a think. Anyhow, I'm gonna call it a day. I've got my cat hassling me for attention. Thanks, folks. Um, I'll stream again on Wednesday, probably. I won't be doing one on Friday, I shouldn't imagine. But I'll be available down on um, uh, Discord, etc., as usual. Okay, see you soon.